With the biggest stars back in the fold, the popularity of the championships exploded, but still the hallowed ground of centre court remained pristine. The All England Club stayed faithful to its ethos of understated elegance to the detriment of potential advertising revenue. Wimbledon is unique. Uh, and and it's, I think it's unique even amongst the four slams. Uh, if you look at commercial activity around the tournament as one example, you compare Roland Garros with Centre Court at Wimbledon. At Roland Garros, lots of sponsors' logos, and Wimbledon, no sponsorship logos. So it, it is a very unique and distinctive property, and, and the comparison that I would make uh, with Wimbledon, uh, certainly in terms of, 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 of other cultural assets, if you like, is that it's a little bit like Buckingham Palace or Windsor Castle. You know, the, the, it's, it's quintessentially English. English. It's very distinctive. It, it, it really uh, screams out Englishness and, and that's very, very different obviously to other tennis tournaments and other sporting events in, in, in this kind of globalised globalized environment that, that sport now operates. I think it's been a, a particular uh, a business um, philosophy of Wimbledon to differentiate itself from other, other uh, organisations and other sporting events and to make itself very individual. And I think by, by not having advertising on, on centre court and around the grounds, that does make Wimbledon quite unique in the world of sport today. And I think if we did uh, have a lot of perimeter advertising, the danger is we would just have levelled ourselves to compete with other events and not have differentiated ourselves in that way. The approach the All England Club has always taken is to have selected partners rather than sponsors, each of whom provides goods and services required for the event. Their minimal, almost subliminal presence on centre court has raised these particular brands to iconic status. In 1978, Rolex, in his history, decided to be more part of the sporting world and uh, the elegance and the exclusivity of the, uh, this Wimbledon Championship was really part of the heart of Rolex at that time, and still is. So it's a major thing for us. Slazenger were immensely proud of our, our long-standing association with the Championships at Wimbledon. Uh, believe it or not, we've been uh, an official ball supplier to the Championships since 1902. That makes us, um, in the partnership, the longest standing in, in sports history. Well, Robinson's lemon barley water was indeed created at Wimbledon, and the story, I'm pretty certain is true, is that there was a Robinson sales representative at Wimbledon on a particular hot and very sunny day noticed that the players were looking pretty fatigued. So he took the initiative and got together a jug with some iced water, some lemon juice, some barley powder, mixed it together and encouraged the players to drink it because it would rehydrate them and invigorate them for the next match. And so there was born Robinson's Lemon Barley Water. It's very, very interesting because I think Wimbledon faces something of a conundrum um, in that at the moment by not having more visible logos, it is foregoing potentially a very strong revenue stream. But at the same time, the more it commercialises, the more potentially it tarnishes the, the essence of the Wimbledon brand. We, t we were talking about the exclusivity, elegance, uh, uniqueness. Uh, it's really the same thing for Rolex. Uh, tradition, innovation. Uh, so these, these are the roots of our association.